Okay, it's Tuesday the 12th of June, um, it is three days before paper three, it, the final, the big, big, big final sociology exam, paper three, the toughie, um, crime and deviance with theory and methods. Um, I'm a sociology guy, an experienced A-level um, sociology teacher and A-level examiner for one of the major exam boards and I'm here to take you through ethnicity and crime today. Okay, bit of a disclaimer, there is no prior knowledge of the A-level exams. Today I'm doing something a little bit different. Um, this question and item has been created by AQA, it was on one of their specimen papers. Um, it is it did appear in the specimen papers that have been released prior to June 2018, um, but I do have no knowledge of what is going to be on the exam. It's just a walkthrough of one of the possible exam questions that could come up. The essay structure is one way of answering the question and other approaches may still score full marks. Okay. So let's go into it. Uh, the question, and there you go, there's AQA's question, um, was applying material from item B in your knowledge evaluate sociological explanations for ethnic differences in offending and criminalization. Okay, so at each stage of the criminal justice process, there are differences in the experiences of different ethnic groups. For example, members of some ethnic groups are more likely than others to be arrested and convicted. Studies also show that some minority ethnic groups are more likely to be identified as perpetrators by victims. Okay. So a couple of hints in there that we could possibly look at. Um, members of some ethnic groups are more likely than others to be arrested and convicted. Okay, maybe a little hint at selective law enforcement, how we would target certain ethnic groups, um, racial profiling or profiling on the locality, that the, uh, locality of the area they live in. Uh, studies also show that some minority ethnic groups are more likely to be identified by perpetrators as victims. Okay, so maybe not a hint at institutional racism, but maybe a hint, hint at racism in wider society um, as well. So there's the question. Um, the key terms in there, so like I'm looking at, is offending and criminalization. So criminalization, there's a little bit of a hint that you're going to need to talk about, sort of like um, the way that the ethnic groups are perceived in the media. So let's look at some of the concepts we could potentially talk about here. Left realism, symbolic resistance, ecological theories, particularly things like broken windows or, or the ecological theories put forward by the Chicago School, even though they may seem to be slightly outdated. Uh, fully social theory, folk devils and moral panics, strain theory, criminogenic capitalism, selective law enforcement, institutional racism, racism in wider society, subcultural theories. You can apply any of those to um, the experience of ethnic minorities and uh, link it into their uh, offending and criminalization. And they're the type of studies that I would possibly expect to see on um, uh, the mark scheme on, on uh, some of the concepts that are being discussed. Okay, again, I like to do an introduction. Um, you don't have to do an introduction. What I'm doing with this one is I'm just pretty much setting the scene. Uh, for how I'm going to answer the question. I've given some statistics to identify the differences between the different ethnic groups. Um, so let's go. Crime statistics show there are, there are differences in the rate of offending and criminalization for different ethnic groups in society. Whilst the majority of crime is committed by white people, other groups such as African, Caribbean and Asian are disproportionately represented in crime statistics. For example, 26% of male prisoners and 29% of female prisoners are from non-white ethnicities. Um, if we make a comparison um, into society, it's around about 85% are white in the UK. Um, furthermore, African Caribbean are seven times more likely to be stopped and searched. Um, you know, maybe we can hint at sus laws. Uh, sorry, you know, sus laws could be something that you talk about, uh, stop and search. And Asians twice as likely to be stopped and searched as white people. Sociologists suggest there are a number of reasons why there are differences in ethnic rates of offending and criminalization, including media representations of groups, hinting at folk devils, uh, marginalization in society, left realists, relative deprivation, again left realists, and forms of political resistance, neo Marxists. Other sociologists would suggest that ethnic differences in offending and criminalization are due to institutional racism in the police and courts. Okay, so again, I'm going with a five concept or five paragraph essay here. And there's probably more than five concepts that we'll discuss over the course of the essay, but it's five paragraphs. If you've watched any of my other videos, you will know that the way I structure my essays, um, I apply in the first line. So I apply my knowledge of sociology to the question in the first line. Then I would look to explain it. Um, I would look to explain why the concept I've identified. So for example, um, symbolic resistance, what it is. And then I would look to analyze it. How does symbolic resistance work? Um, 
who is affected, how does it mean that ethnic minorities are more likely to be uh, um, seen as offenders or seen as criminal and then I evaluate it and bring in either another piece of research that would criticize it um, or I will make a kind of value judgment based on that so saying for example it only focuses on on the perpetrators not on the victims so that's how I would tackle that one so let's just go into the main body of the essay now so paragraph one one reason for the differences in ethnic rates of offending is marginalization um, and it's a left realist idea one of the three left realist ideas as to why um, crime occurs. Left realists suggest that the process of marginalization where certain groups in society are socially and economically excluded from mainstream society can lead to in increased criminality. Lee and Young suggest that through a process of creating negative stereotypes about a certain ethnic group and then reinforcing these through the media, some minority ethnic groups begin to become isolated and feel resentment towards mainstream society. This can be seen in the treatment of African Caribbean groups in the late 1970s and early 1980s and culminated in civil unrest and riots. Okay, what I've done there, first line, application. I've given my reason. This is one reason why there are differences in ethnic rates and offending, marginalization. Then I've explained what is marginalization in my explanation, and then I've analyzed how were ethnic minority groups marginalized in society, and how did this mean that they were more likely um, to commit crimes. My evaluation there, however, some critics would suggest that some governments have created policies to integrate ethnic minorities into wider society, whilst others would argue that some minority groups choose not to integrate. Marginalisation is one reason for the differences in the disproportionate rate of, ethnic min of minority ethnic offending. Okay, could have developed that evaluation a little bit more by giving an example of a policy um, that looked to integrate ethnic minorities into wider society, particularly some of the public policies on the new labor. Um, you could have counter-evaluated it by sort of like using some of the assimilation policies that were, that were run in, in the kind of 60s and 70s. Um, Norman Tebbit's famous, if the West Indies were playing England in Birmingham, who would you support? And if you supported the West Indies, then you were British, and therefore there was something wrong with you. So we could look at examples like that in there as well. Paragraph two, a second reason is relative deprivation, another left realist approach. Um, most minority minority ethnic groups find themselves in the lower socioeconomic groups, usually because of blocked opportunities in the education system or worse still, racism in wider society. So there's two other concepts I've, I've kind of introduced, I've explained why um, um, ethnic minority groups tend to be relatively deprived. So I've talked about blocked opportunities, could have developed that to go into subcultural theories, racism in wider society, I could have developed that as well. Left realists would suggest that relative deprivation is an important factor in the differences between ethnic rates of offending, whilst Merton's strain theory offers an explanation as to how relative deprivation might cause crime. Those, uh, those in the lowest socioeconomic groups are more likely to feel a strain to enemy, as they are less likely to be able to achieve the socially approved goals through legitimate means. This could cause them to innovate and try to achieve their goals through, uh, through crime or retreat and reject the goals and norms of society. So I've introduced another concept in my analysis to show that how relative deprivation might cause um, forms of crime. And I've used Merton's strain theory to back that up. An evaluation. This explanation can be seen as very deterministic as not all ethnic groups react to deprivation by committing crime. And I've given some examples, Asian and Chinese. Um, it's very simple. It's what we might see as being a bolt on evaluation. It could have been developed in a number of different ways. So we could have talked about relative deprivation. Well, this doesn't explain why um, there has been a lot of violent crime within ethnic minority communities, which may be sort of like better explained by something um, such as like Hall or Gilroy. A further reason for ethnic differences in paragraph three um, is the overrepresentation of African Caribbean Asians in statistics due to institutional racism. Okay, so I'm bringing in an idea that um, they're not as criminal as we are making out, but institutional racism, the police are targeting them. Uh, Developed this point where I've explained it, Reiner suggested that there exists within the police a canteen culture of suspicion and racial profiling of non white ethnic groups. And I've given a little bit further evidence there. This can be seen as African, Caribbean and Asian are more likely than others to be arrested and convicted. 
link back to the item. Furthermore, evidence presented by the McPherson inquiry into the murder of Stephen Lawrence found that the Metropolitan Police operated on policies and procedures that were designed to disadvantage non-white ethnic groups and further supported by the Metropolitan Police Black Officers Association that suggested in 2008 that ethnic minorities should not join the force as racism was allowed to grow within the force. Two strong pieces of evidence to suggest that there is racism um, within the Metropolitan Police. That is my analysis. That is that is me showing that, look, I'm going to back up this idea that there is um, institutional racism in the police. However, and this is a criticism, some would argue that the police act upon reports from the public and are therefore merely arrested suspects whose descriptions they have been given. Marxists would, however, suggest that the police profile non-white ethnic groups and make their apprehension a priority. So there's an evaluation and a counter-evaluation there. Paragraph four, um, my application here is um, put, is the neo-Marxist explanation, suggests that criminal behaviour in the black community is a sign of political resistance against the oppression of these groups in society. So I've explained what symbolic resistance is or political resistance is. And now to analyse it, I'm going to talk about how this works. Uh, Gilroy and Hall suggested that during the 1970s, there was a crisis of hegemony in British society with high unemployment, civil unrest, industrial disputes and international domestic terrorism. Gilroy suggests that in order to distract from the inability of the ruling class to control society, they created a myth of black criminality by scapegoating young black males as being criminal, causing fear amongst the public and distracting from bigger issues. This focused the public's attention onto these folk devils and the black community attempted to resist this label, but instead confirmed the public's suspicions. OK, so basically I've given you a commentary um, on how this works on how political resistance works, okay? An evaluation, however, many would argue that black crime is not a sign of political resistance as many crimes committed by African Caribbean males are against other African Caribbean males in their own neighborhood rather than those against them, that are oppressing them. We might expect to see if crime is, is a sign of political resistance, more crimes against either whites or against institutions. Um, we do see a little bit of that, so your counter-evaluation could be high levels of exclusion in schools for African Caribbean males who are acting out against the system that is oppressing them. But in wider society, it tends to be they will commit crimes in the local neighbourhoods. You could explain that through frustration or alienation or because they don't have access to other areas. But and the argument still stands is that if it was a true act of political resistance, it would be against the system that is oppressing them. The final explanation for dif differences in criminalization of different ethnic groups is the view of ecological theories. Now, yeah, I know what you're thinking. Some ecological theories are incredibly dated, nearly 100 years old. Um, ecological theories such as those suggested by the Chicago School, for example, and more recently, Wilson and Kelling's Broken Windows suggest that there are areas where criminal behavior is more likely to occur. Both of, the, both of these theories suggest that criminal behaviour tends to occur more frequently in areas of high deprivation that have a lack of community bonds. These areas tend to be inhabited by ethnically diverse populations as they are in areas where there is cheap housing, minority ethnic groups tend to be in low paid employment. Examples of these areas can be seen in the ghettos of large American cities such as New York, Baltimore and Detroit, which have ethnically diverse populations and high areas of criminal activity. Links can be made to subcultural theories here, as in, as in these areas there are more likely to be conflict subcultures that due to a lack of opportunities elsewhere in society look to achieve status through asserting themselves as the dominant gang in their neighbourhood. So, not only have I talked about where they live, but I've talked about the lack of opportunities in, in where they live. So I'm showing a, a deeper understanding, I'm piecing the puzzle together. And by linking one idea into another idea, that shows analysis. However, critics have suggested that the higher rates of criminality in these areas is in part due to reduced public services, less police attention and tendency from local governments to allow these areas to atrophy. And we can also argue, argue what South calls um, environmental discrimination, um, particularly on the, on the background of um, 
ethnic minority neighborhoods um, they are more likely to be placed in areas near sort of like refuse collection um, in areas that are undesirable so we can link in this idea of environmental discrimination into things like broken windows theory and say that well ethnic minorities because they're low pay uh, because they're low paid end up in areas that they can afford which tend to be um, environmentally not quite not not so pleasant they don't end up in the gentrified areas um, of say for example you know of New York so um, in conclusion there is not one sing simple reason why there are differences in ethnic rates of uh, offending as poverty social exclusion racism and media portrayals all play a part however methodologically sociologists need to challenge the way in which crime is recorded as often the focus of the police on these groups will skew the statistics white collar and corporate crime does not receive the attention that ethnic minority street crime receives uh, through the media and selective policing therefore the statistics can be seen as invalid so my evaluation here is that a lot of the statistics that we are judging ethnic minority crime on are not valid they've been uh, they've been um, manipulated and as a consequence they, they, they are very much a social construction and um, the factors that influence that social construction are obviously things like institutional racism uh, and selective law enforcement when we're focusing on you know we, we, if we are if we are military uh, if we are using a form of policing known as military policing on these areas then of course we're going to capture more uh, we're going to capture more ethnic minority criminals okay in sociology uh, paper three on friday and um, i hope certainly that you found these videos informative and really helpful and i hope that it gets you a good grade um thank you for watching students so um, now you can you know you can switch off you know i just have a very short message for your teachers have they gone? Have they definitely gone? Just check, even even like that, that that slow kid that hangs around with the back of the class, fiddling around with stuff, that kid gone too. Brilliant, great. Now, the exciting news you've all been waiting for. Teachers, it's time. It's time to put down those purple pens of progress. It's time to stop worrying about progress at schools. It's time to top, toss Alps in the bin because it's time it's time for the secret sociologist summer all-nighter kick off those Birkenstocks and pull on your black balonics get rid of the check shirts and put on your bugo hoss it is gonna be the sociology party to end all night we are gonna party like oligarch capitalists champagne caviar well, we don't have any of them because we can't run a budget, but it's going to be too far on Bacardi Breezes, and so like, the first hundred people who turn up will get an ecologically friendly tote bag from a local university who have hosted an obscure conference, and there'll be free highlighters in there too. We're going to party till dawn. No more marking. No more excuses. No more, I'm really, really sorry, the bus is late. Dress code for the night is 70s critical theorists. Bring your Foucaults. Bring your Chomskys. But no Kate Millets. <laughs>